Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about my favorite apps that I like to use to track storms. Last year we did a video on this. I wanted to update it because there are some new features to the apps I covered. Also, I wanted to cover some websites because you might be at home, you might be on a laptop in the field, I don't know. But there are plenty of sites online too that do not have apps that you will absolutely wanna check out. I don't wanna stand on ceremony. Let's get right to it some of my favorite apps to track storms. Now the first app I wanna talk about, the tried and true, Radar Scope. Everybody uses Radar Scope. There's so many features, but it's also a very basic app, which plays to its strengths, honestly. First off, the radar view of this thing, really simple to uh, take on. It's very simple to open the app and the radar data is there. It's very smooth. Look at this, I'm just scrolling around, no problem. And there's things like lightning data, of course. I mean, it's this standard professional style radar app. You've got just a little bit of everything, everything you need, and it's all there. Now, there are some things that are some drawbacks, like it kind of begins and ends at radar data. There's nothing else there. So this is a very self-contained radar app. But if that's what you're looking for, Radar Scope is really, really good at displaying radar information. Something that was introduced in a recent update was custom color tables. You can see mine is probably different than yours. Uh, I've got it on reflectivity and velocity, and I really, really love my color table. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make it available. Maybe I'll do that, I don't know. It's in the description below if you want to use the color tables that I use. I really enjoy it. So you can see there are a lot of features that are locked behind a pro paywall. That's A-OK. -okay. I actually do not subscribe to the pro uh, version out of season, so I haven't subscribed to these, but you can get uh, SPC outlooks, MD, uh, mesoscale discussions, special weather statements, you know, you can get all these additional features uh, in the app. And those are very helpful, especially storm reports. Like the underrated people don't talk about it, but storm reports is actually very helpful for me as a storm chaser, but also is helpful for folks who are tracking storms at home. I love that feature. I love storm reports being right in the app, right there, easy to see. So kudos, kudos RadarScope. Now there is a base charge for Radar Scope. I believe it's still $10 in the App Store. So you're gonna have to pay $10 or I think it's 30 on desktop. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. So if you want to check out Radar Scope, just know there is a price of entry, but I think it's well worth it. It's widely regarded as the best professional radar app. I don't disagree. Check it out. You won't be sorry. Now next up on our tour of apps, let's check out Radar Omega. I recommended this app last year, and there's been so much change since I last recommended it. First off, the performance is so, 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 so much smoother. Uh, you can see I'm scrolling around here. It just works better. Now, if I move over here, I'm just gonna move down. You can first off, I have the SPC outlooks on. There's a marginal risk in Central Texas the day I'm filming this. There will be storms there today. Let's take a look uh, at the Dias radar. You can see, First thing that pops up, you see it, surface odds. Look at this, you also have a couple of showers showing up on radar on this right now. Uh, this is awesome. I love having surface odds in an app with the radar on. Also, you'll notice the radar seems smoother. It's not pixelated like it was in radar scope. That's because I have actually turned on smoothing. Uh, I love a smooth radar uh, image versus uh, the pixelated. There is so much to like. This is actually the app I use primarily now. Uh, it's still got some bugs. It's still, the, the layout is a mess still. Like, look at all this. There's, there's so many options. But I've heard through the grapevine that we are getting an update with a much better interface that's much uh, easier to navigate. But there are so many features. If you are a weather enthusiast and you're willing to put in the time to set this up, uh, again, you can see I have the same color table set up on this one that I did on uh, Radar Scope. And that's because I just love this color table. Uh, I love the green showing light right and then progressively red and then pink and black. I just, and then white, it's perfect. It is great. I love this color table. I can't recommend it enough. This is a lot. It is a lot 
to uh, work with. There are so many features. This is not for the faint of heart. But with the new update coming, probably a smoother interface, this app's only getting better heading into the fall season and then also next spring. Uh, I think this is going to be the app to beat uh, long term. I love Radar Omega. Please check it out. You won't be sorry. Now, another app that made it on my list last year and I'm hoping can continue to stay on this list is Sat Squatch. I still love this app. There are a couple of like very annoying bugs. First off, the caching. Like, like why can a satellite image not stay loaded up? You see it here. I just had one loaded up. It's gone. I wish we could fix that because it would make things so much better. As far as like a mobile satellite viewer, it's hard to beat this. Like, let's take a look at that Texas area and you can see there are building uh, cumulus there right now. Like, very simple to check that out and uh, get a good view of it. You know, looping it, you can see uh, the stuff unfolding. There are some other great features to this app that you do have to subscribe for, but let's talk about them. Uh, you can turn on things like mesoanalysis. You can also have METARs on this app, which is very nice. They're not as, it doesn't have all of them like Radar Omega does, but you can see them. You can also turn on other mesoanalysis. Like you want, I wanna see uh, what is the surface base cape under those Q right now? Bam, there it is. I can pull it up, it's right there, you can see it. So here's a minor annoyance with this app that I do not get. I wanna look at, Dup I just wanna look at mesoanalysis. I have to add a satellite layer. Why? I do not know. Because, let's just take a look at this. I'm gonna turn on the satellite layer. Then I'm going to turn on, let's just say, the dew point layer. We're just gonna turn it on. Oh, there's the dew points. But let's turn the satellite layer off now. And it's there! Like, why can this not? I don't get it. You know, honestly, Satsquatch reminds me of Radar Scope. It shows you satellite information and mesoanalysis data, like very basic mesoanalysis data, but it's all there. It's a very simple interface. It's easy to use. So that's why I use it. I wish that it was better, but for what it does, for what it has set out to do, it is really good. Check it out. I really hope that some of my annoyances are answered, but I'm still very thrilled with this app. So let's change it up a little bit and let's talk about desktop apps. More notably, let's talk about websites that you can check out weather data. First off, everybody's favorite, Pivotal Weather. So looking at Pivotal Weather, there is so much to like about this website. Let's navigate over to models because that's where everyone's at. First off, you have just like this amazing a variety of products. So there are so many features on Pivotal Weather that honestly, it's good. I could do a whole video, I probably will, on Pivotal Weather. But there are so many models. First off, look at that. Look at that list. There are so many models to check out on Pivotal Weather. I love the I love that the Euro's on there. I love that the ensembles are on there. If you take a look at all the different models, there is so, I mean, I just pulled up something, I just skipped over it, but look at all the different options you have. You have so many options, it is so cool. I, I always default to the forecast loop. In fact, I'm going to navigate off the screen and show you that I actually just have a shortcut straight to the HRRR uh, for the reflectivity. And you can just see that over the central US. It's just, it's right there, it's right there. Also point soundings, like, it's that simple, you just point at it, you go, and you can pull up soundings. You get the beautiful Sharpie soundings on Pivotal Weather. Uh, a thing that has been added that I absolutely adore, Fox soundings, which I recommend, like, we're gonna, have to do a, we're gonna have to do a tutorial on Pivotal Weather. Like, that's all there is to say about it because people misuse this, don't think about it. But Fox soundings, <laughs> Fox soundings are where it's at. I'm just gonna say it. Box soundings, if, if you're like doing point soundings, you're doing it wrong. Box soundings, it's just the way to go. So Pivotal Weather, highly recommended, awesome site. But this next website, the next one, you may or may not be using, but you absolutely should be using. The next website on my list, this is like the fifth thing I've recommended. We're gonna cap it at five. There are so many options, it's ridiculous. It, it just is, there, it's like such a change from the old days. Like when I first started storm chasing, you had just a few options. But you wanna know one that's been there forever? SDC Mesoanalysis. This is the like, 
You want to know what's going on right now? Mesoanalysis is absolutely what you want to use. It is an incredible website. There are so many features, just like Pivotal Weather. I'm going to have to do a full walkthrough of this website to talk about the features, the functions. This has to be done. I am writing this down. It is going to happen before spring. So when you take a look at the graphics on mesoanalysis, they can be messy. Like if you do not know what you're looking at, you will see lines, colors, it makes no sense. So it takes it, there's a learning curve associated with this website. Don't do not fool yourself. There is a learning curve. There's so many uh, options here too. Uh, composite indices, like look at this. This is so cool. You can get the SARS hell size. When I leave the house, I'm looking at mesoanalysis. I'm looking at Sasquatch for uh, ra uh, satellite data, radar scope for radar data. Very rarely am I checking out pivotal weather on the road. Sometimes I will to make adjustments. I mean, you have to stay flexible, but this is where it's at. A couple of things that they have added this year that I am so happy about, so happy about. Uh, first one right here, skew T maps. Oh, is that not cool? That is incredible. You can see, uh, I mean, again, if you don't know what you're looking at, this looks completely ridiculous. But uh, once you train yourself up on this map, this is like incredible. Also, quick plug for our friend Cameron Nixon in his videos on our channel uh, card right here. Uh, you can check out the Hodograph map on the SBC Mesoanalysis. This is a uh, brainchild of Cameron's. Uh, and you can see, you can see Hodographs just like marked all over the map. You can see what the wind profiles look like across the entire environment. Incredible. I love Mesoanalysis. Like I cannot stress enough how much I love mesoanalysis. You have to have this in your arsenal of things you are using to track storms. Absolutely. So those are my five favorite weather apps. There are videos coming for each of them, I think, just to kind of go over each. That seems like a natural place to go from here. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, enable notifications. There are so many things coming on this channel. So many things, like so many things. So you want to be a part of that. You want to uh, stay in tune. Also, I'm prepared to announce something about live streaming and 2023, maybe as soon as the fall season this year. Be a part of the weather experience. Check it out. Weather is for everybody, including you. We'll see you next time.